So now let us continue with our discussion regarding lever function. And the only thing left to discuss is with regards to your clinical significance. So the very famous disease or condition which is related to your bilirubin is your jaundice. Jaundice comes from the French word yon, which means yellow. And it is since uh, this condition is also characterized by a yellow discoloration of our skin, including our sclera. Now, one related term as to having a yellow discoloration of our serum or plasma is icterus, or sometimes uh, when we just try to describe our blood sample with such color, uh, color discoloration, so we usually say it as icteric ang sample. So again, that is related to having an elevated bilirubin level. You can actually see that here. But usually, our serum or plasma is clear. But with an icteric sample, uh, very yellow siya in a sense na mura siyag somehow mahimung greenish, greenish yellow. So that is icterus. And with jaundice, we could differentiate the conditions related to jaundice in three different types. It could be prehepatic, hepatic, or post-hepatic. Prehepatic meaning to say yung cause na nagkar jaundice is before sa liver. Hepatic liver mismo, post-hepatic after the liver. So let us begin with prehepatic jaundice. Now, with prehepatic jaundice, there is excessive amount of bilirubin being presented to our liver for metabolism. So again, prehepatic, it occurs when the problem, uh, again, is prior to your liver. And these are examples of causes why there is prehepatic jaundice. So one, we have hemolysis. Another is hemolytic anemia. And then lastly, we have malaria. Now, when we say hemolysis, diba, this is the breakdown or RBC destruction. When we say hemolytic anemia, uh, the problem is that your RBCs are being destroyed faster than they can be replaced. And kaya nagkakaroon ng anemia kasi very low na yung level ng ating RBCs. Now, with these three examples, the common denominator here, kids, is that there is too much destruction of your red blood cell. And when there is too much destruction of your red blood cell, again, there is also too much bilirubin being presented to your liver. Recall yung ating bilirubin metabolism, na yung schematic diagram, na diba the very first bilirubin that is synthesized is actually outside pa sa liver, wherein your bilirubin comes from your him. Malaria, bakit kasali siya? Since here in this image, these are your malaria, there are a lot of types of malaria na katong inyo mga plasmodium, o man siya ang ato ang causative agent. And there is a stage in the life cycle of your malaria wherein they will reside in our red blood cells. And, and once they mature, i-release mana, mugawas mana sila sa inyuhang red blood cells, they will be released. And in order for them to be released, there will be a rupture of your red blood cell that will happen. And so, prehepatic jaundice pa rin, related pa rin dun sa ating too much destruction of your red blood cell. So, with prehepatic jaundice, we would expect that yung type of bilirubin that will really be elevated would be your bilirubin 1. So, there will be increased bilirubin 1, and we usually term this as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Recall that the under name for your bilirubin 1, or that in terms of its property, it is unconjugated. Kaya nga po, meron tayong conjugation process. Kaya din po, dine-deliver natin si bilirubin 1 to your liver for it to become water-soluble. So how about post-hepatic jaundice? So again, this happens after your liver. So here, yung common reason why there is a post-hepatic jaundice, it's in terms of the excretion of your bilirubin. So there will be an impaired bilirubin excretion. And ang usual na mga conditions wherein there is impaired bilirubin excretion would be the following. So biliary obstructive diseases, like if there is presence of your gallstone, if na-i-tumor, dara sa inyuhang liver. 
And since we are talking about after your liver, so ang uh, it's expected na yung mag-increase na type of bilirubin will be, of course, your bilirubin 2. Meaning to say, your liver here is properly functioning. Again, ang problem lang good is in terms of the excretion. So meaning, na effective na conjugation na mahitabo, ang ato alang ani is dili lang yun siya ma-excrete. So, magpundo sa inyuhang liver. So again, what is elevated here in your post-hepatic jaundice is your bilirubin 2. That is why in the laboratory, yung laboratory test, it would always be best na kung magpa-test man ng bilirubin, both good from your conjugated to unconjugated and even your total bilirubin, Kasi dyan natin maa-assess, magkakaroon po tayo dyan na differential diagnosis for us to really assess where exactly is the problem. So now we go to your hepatic jaundice. So meaning to say the problem, the primary problem is mismong dun po sa liver. So these are the following examples why there will be jaundice, why there will be hepatic jaundice. So it can result from as stated here, these are examples. It could be because there is impaired cellular uptake or it could be that the problem is in your conjugation. So there is defective conjugation, walay conjugation, or there is abnormal secretion of your bilirubin by your liver cell. So it could be or it could mean that there is a defect in our uh, intrinsic na mga or dun mismo sa hepatocytes nyo. So hepatic jaundice na example skids can be divided into two. Depende if ano yung main type of bilirubin that will be increased. So, kaya meron din tayong unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia na under hepatic jaundice and conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So, under unconjugated would be your Gilbert syndrome and your Krigler najar Now, for your conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, we have your Rotor syndrome and your Dobbin-Johnson. So, let us begin with your Gilbert syndrome. Now, if you try to search in Google Kids, uh, Gilbert is actually pronounced as Zilbar. Kasi I forgot what country first na discover. Ito po na sakit. But then again, ita mga Pinoy laman ta. So let's just uh, state it in a simple way your Gilbert syndrome. So the main problem here in your Gilbert syndrome is in terms of the transport. So this is a bilirubin transport deficit, meaning there is a decrease in the transportation of your bilirubin. And this is a benign autosomal recessive hereditary disorder. So uh, when we say autosomal recessive, meaning to say uh, the, genetic, uh, the genetic trait or condition, uh, pwede siya ma-pass down from your parents to children. So somehow, pwede po tumingo na familial ang kaning mo tag autosomal recessive. So here again, there is impaired cellular uptake of your bilirubin. And another problem here in your Gilbert syndrome is that around 70 to 80 percent reduce ang glucuronidation activity. So meaning to say there is a problem in the conjugation process, but not that, uh, not that severe. As you can see, hindi po 100 percent ang problem. So meaning to say, my certain portion pa rin, around 20 to 30 percent na nakakonjugate si bilirubin, but not all of it are being conjugated. And so, Gilbert syndrome kids, since somehow my slight problem with the conjugation, so kaya what is elevated here is your bilirubin 1. So the problem as to why there is reduction in the glucuron glucuronidation activity is there is a mutation in the gene, your UGT1A1, which is responsible in making your UDGTT. Katong ato ang main na enzyme na nag-conjugate sa ato ang bilirubin. So, Gilbert syndrome underlying liver disease is due to a defective conjugation system, but in the absence of hemolysis. So, that is why uh, Gilbert syndrome actually does not carry any morbidity or mortality kids. Meaning to say, dili ni siya yung anak ka severe na sakit. And if you try to read, read your books or to search about this disease or this syndrome, it would also be emphasized na di mang ganit po siya kailangan of treatment. So siguro it's more on managing lang na management or something anak lang. 
So here with Gilbert syndrome, there is also no signs and symptoms and very mild lang po yun ang icterus or katong yellow, yellow discoloration na ato ang ma-observe. So, yun na nga, since there is still around 20 to 30 percent na ma-conjugate na bilirubin, so it is, it generally has no clinical consequences. And that is why parang hinahayaan lang din and kaya no need for treatment lang din. So now we go to your Krigler na jar. So in terms of conjugation, the very first syndrome is really your Krigler na jar. Dun talaga yung my problem with regards to the conjugation of your B1 to B2. Since this is characterized by a deficiency mismo of your enzyme, your UDPGT. And there are actually two types of Krigler na jar, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 if complete absence of the enzyme. And that is why there will also be total absence. Wala po talagang ma-measure na concentration of your bilirubin 2. But with type 2, less severe ang deficiency of your UDPGT. Yun lang po for your Krigler na jar. Now let us proceed with your Dobbin or Dubin-Johnson syndrome. So Dubin-Johnson syndrome, ang problem is in the excretion, bilirubin excretion deficit. This is still an autosomal recessive disease. And Dubin-Johnson presents shortly after birth with an increase of your conjugated bilirubin. Kaya again, the pro hindi po yung conjugation ang problem. Your bilirubin 1 are normally conjugated. The problem is in, in its excretion. And dali lang man ma-identify si Dobin Johnson in a sense that we can also test your liver enzymes. Like for example, your ALT and AST. These are examples of your liver enzymes, your alanine aminotransferase and your aspartate aminotransferase. So here with Dobin Johnson, there is no elevation of your liver enzymes. Liver enzymes are very helpful also in differential diagnosis or in diagnosing if there is problems in your liver. And you get to understand more about these enzymes uh, sa next na clinical chemistry kasi dun po yung focus in terms of your enzymology sa clinical chemistry too. So another thing with Dobin Johnson is that there is also presence of what we call your delta bilirubin. So what is this delta bilirubin? Delta bilirubin, if you encounter this word, this means that uh, ito yung mga bilirubin na nakabound pa, nakabound or nakabind pa sa inyuhang albumin. Remember the role of your albumin, di ba? It is the main transport protein of your bilirubin 1. It is responsible in transporting your bilirubin 1 to your liver. Especially para ang inyuhang biliruba, bilirubin 1 uh, maka-enter maka po dyan sa inyuhang hepatocyte. But no problem with delta bilirubin because this is actually non-toxic. So, kung naamay elevation ani niya, so it does not pose any problem lang mampu. Sa ato ang wala siya any clinical consequences. So, in Dobin Johnson, kaya po there is a bilirubin excretion deficit. It's because of this one. There is a defect in your adenosine triphosphate binding cassette canalicular multi-specific organic and ion transporter or what we call your MRP2 CMOAT ABCC2 so actually if you if napansin ninyo katong last na face to face na to na class wadyo ni siyang gisulat ahead kasi taas kaayo og meaning you know naman si ma'am hinay kaayo mo sulat so bale in order to define each of this when we say MRP2 this is what we call your multi-drug multi resistance associated protein 2. Okay. I hope klaro siya. Wala na ko na-change na ang color. Multi-drug resistance. Uh, resistance associated. I dash the re. Multi-drug resistance associated. Protein 2. Whereas for your CMO80, this means canalicular, ah, ito, canalicular, multi specific, organic, and ion transporter. And with your ABCC2, chalimona ni siyang sa taas, your adenosine triphosphate binding cassette. And ang kaning C2, 
na portion, this refers to your subfamily C. Member 2. So, more mga nice to know lang po ni siya, kids. So, again, that is what we mean by your MRP2, CMOAT, ABCC2. So, asa exactly ang kanisha? Going back to this image, your MRP2, CMOAT, ABCC2 is actually referring to this one. Kaning blue crescent na inyo hong makita, diri na image, that is your MRP2, kato siya, ABCC, uh, CMOAT, ABCC which is indicated as a, as a secretory protein. Remember the role of this one? It is where your conjugated bilirubin will bind in order to enter into your bile canaliculi and then it will then be excreted. So if there is no presence of such, then your conjugated bilirubin will not be able to enter your canaliculi and, of course, it will not be excreted. Kaya Dobin-Johnson is called as a bilirubin excretion deficit because of the defect of such protein. So, if you try to check the levels of your bilirubin, uh, isa sa mag-increase is, of course, ang total bilirubin. Actually, when we say total bilirubin, both your B1 and B2 here ang, ang increased. What must elevated yun ang inyuhang conjugated bilirubin? So, uh, one thing with your Dobin Johnson, isa sa murag diagnostic feature niya is there will be an appearance of a dark stained granules once na magpa-biopsy. So, ito po. This is how your liver would look like. And if you try to look it under the microscope, dara to mga dark stained granules na ay mga presence ani niya. Now, the reason behind why there is dark pigmentation of your liver, uh, as stated, I think, ni Henry's, I think kay Henry's ni siya, uh, this is because of the accumulation of your lipofuxin pigment, lipofuxin pigment, which are brown granules coming from the degradation of your lipids. Kaya my presence, my dark stained dark staining presence there in your liver. So again, lipofuxin, lipofuxin are brown granules from the degradation of your lipids. So now we go to your rotor syndrome. Now, rotor syndrome has the same symptoms with your Dobbin Johnson. How are we going to differentiate rotor from Dobbin? Kanilang yun na This is your key word you'd hear. Again, Going back to Dobin Johnson, there is dark pigmentation in the liver that will happen. But here in your rotor syndrome, the only thing that will differentiate rotor from Dobin is in terms of the pigmentation. For rotor syndrome, liver cells are not pigmented here. And it is also hypothesized to be due to a reduction in the concentration or activity of your binding protein, intracellular binding protein such as your ligandine. So here, there is also an increase in your bilirubin too. Another problem na as to hepatic jaundice, another example would be physiologic jaundice of the newborn. Diba common din naman sa mga newborns na magkaroon ng bilirubin problems and usually magka-yellow discoloration. So here, why magkaroon of physiologic jaundice sa newborn it, this is because of the deficiency of your glucuronyl transferase. Ani mong gong inyuhang UDPGT or your glucuronyl transferase in general, this is one of the last uh, liver functions that will be activated uh, during uh, sa mga newborn. Kay, uh, why siya ang last? Kay, ang kaning bilirubin processing mga good kids, it is handled by the mother of the fetus. So by the time na maanak ma sila, so, kani ang medyo dugay na process. So, this will result in the rapid build-up of your unconjugated bilirubin, which can then be life-threatening. If dili ma-manage og tarong kids ang bilirubin levels sa newborns, kernicterus will happen. And when we say kernicterus, ano ni siya? There will be cell damages and death in the newborn kay kumbaga, Ang kanang bilirubin manggunato mo, adto na sa ilahang brain. 
and magcause pud na siya og nerve cell problems and nerve cell degeneration. Very easy lang man kaayo ang treatment and management ani gyud na condition, phototherapy lang. Phototherapy or exchange transfusion in case na grabe na gyud siya ka severe. But then again, if na discover man siya uh, at an early time, phototherapy would already be enough. Next, we also have Lucy Driscoll syndrome in which there is bilirubin conjugation inhibition. So this is a familial and conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, meaning to say uh, familial uh, somehow related to autosomal recessive gehapo ng mga diseases. So here, there are very high levels of bilirubin in a newborn's blood affecting enzymes involved in bilirubin metabolism. Kaya po siya tinatawag na bilirubin conjugation inhibition kasi ito yung main cause. There is presence of circulating inhibitor of bilirubin conjugation. Circulating inhibitors, these are substances that limits the ability of your bilirubin to bind to your enzyme. So again, one of the best examples of enzyme that is being inhibited he here is, of course, your UDGPT. Kaya nga, bilirubin conjugation inhibition, there is a lack of conjugation of your bilirubin because of the presence of circulating inhibitors. There is a normal, walay deficiency sa UDPGT ninyo kids. It's just that na ay nag-cancel out sa iyang function o na inhibitor. So the last disease that we will be discussing is your cirrhosis. When we say cirrhosis, scar tissues are now repla are now replacing our normal healthy liver tissue. And because mga scar mga scar tissues na nasa mga mga fib fibrosis something anak to na term kids, it will now block the flow of blood through your organ and it will prevent your liver from functioning properly. Cirrhosis could happen. Especially to those individuals na mga chronic alcohol, uh, na ay chronic alcoholism, and if na ay chronic hepatitis C virus infection. So let us try to compare unsa de ay ang itsura sa healthy and sa and katung na ay cirrhosis, katung ano yung uh, replace na by fibrous tissues ang ato ang mga hepatocytes. So since mga fibrous tissues na ang present, then we would really expect that our lobules there, the functional unit of your cirrhosis, will not be functioning well. Ani ang healthy nato, di ba? Ing ani ang itsura sa healthy na liver. What if na anay cirrhosis? So kanina ang mahitabong problem. Kumbaga, pwede nato i-point out food kids na cirrhosis could really happen, especially if there is irreversible damage that is happening there in our liver. Remember that our liver, our hepatocytes could regenerate. Lalo na kung mga simple injuries lang, and then dili na ito ginasagunsun o kanang sigi-sigi o uh, hatag po ng toxic substances sa ato ang liver, kaya ra kaayo na i-regenerate. But here, again, since there is a continuous irreversible damage that is happening, thus mag-form ng mga fibrous tissues na, and then it will end up na pwede yun po dyan mo magkasirosis. So that it, that's it for our clinical significance. This table would summarize the different levels of our types of jaundice, kung unsa ang level sa total bilirubin, sa inyong conjugated o unconjugated. Although this one will be further emphasized and discussed in your laboratory since unsa ning total conjugated o unconjugated na uh, kaning measurement, dara man po na siya ma-mention, then again, you need to remember this one because this is really the basis for us to do differential diagnosis in relation to the different diseases in your liver, especially if it is related to bilirubin concentrations. So, ayun know, my Gilbert disease, Krigler Najjar, your Dobbin Johnson, your Rotor syndrome, and even jaundice of your newborn. Then we have your prehepatic and your posthepatic. So that ends our liver function discussion, kids. As promised, uh, in relation to your quiz, dili na ako include clinical significance. We'll focus on what we have discussed during our face-to-face -face na meeting. 
Then again, you still need to study this one, okay? Included ni siya sa exam. So, basig mag-expect mo again, na dili na siya i sa exam again, sa quiz lang. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you all soon.